So let us begin yeah. uh, in Ukraine, where, as we've said, uh, Moscow is holding referendums today in territories that it controls. The move is seen as an excuse to annex those regions and has been widely condemned. Meanwhile, in Russia, border checkpoints are teeming with these young men looking to leave the country. Of course, after Vladimir Putin said he would call up some 300,000 reserve troops to fight in the war in Ukraine. Deborah Pata has more from Kyiv. Vladimir Putin's call-up of military reservists has not gone down well at home, with hundreds trying to get out of the country to avoid being drafted. But many citizens receive their papers within hours of Putin's announcement, effective immediately. Holding on tightly, no time for speeches, only hasty goodbyes and tearful farewells as citizens called up to fight in Vladimir Putin's war head off to training camps. For loved ones left behind, the cold grip of fear. Putin's men have not been faring well on Ukraine's battlefields. Russia estimates they've lost nearly 6,000 soldiers. The U.S. puts those killed or wounded at around 80,000. Flights out of the country are booked solid. A panicked exodus of Russians trying to escape conscription. I feel that not really many lots of Russians people want to, to fight and want to be mobilized and want to go to the army. And at border exits to Georgia, Finland and Serbia, traffic has been backed up. In the far east of Russia, another long line. New conscripts unable to dodge this bullet boarding military planes. Many of these reserve soldiers have never fought in a war, let alone one that already has even hardened Russian fighters on the back foot. Ukrainian soldiers may be outgunned and outmanned, but Special Forces Senior Lieutenant Taras Berezovets told us his men are more nimble with a vital weapon on their side, technology. One of the stars of this war has been satellite devices used by Ukrainian troops on the front lines to communicate anywhere, anytime, swiftly to avoid detection. It's modern warfare. It's modern warfare, absolutely. Never seen before. I think one of the reasons why Russians lost, because they completely been outdated. But this is a long war and far from over. Today in occupied territories, Russia has begun referendums to push through a vote allowing Putin to annex these regions, just like he did in Crimea. Vlad and Marie? Deborah, thank you. So let's bring in CBS News uh, reporter Mary Ilushina to talk a little bit more about this vote. Um, Mary, so these referenda, referenda, I don't know how you say plural right. referenda, yeah. uh, they have been denounced as illegitimate by Western nations and Ukraine. What does Russia want from these elections? Uh, hi, I'm Mary. Hi, Vlad. Um, Russia wants basically two things with these referendums. Uh, one is to portray it to the Russian public that they are gaining something, that they are achieving some of their goals that they've stated at the beginning of this war um, by bringing, you know, Russians home uh, from these occupied territories and uniting them with um, Russia because there are some, you know, a large number of Russian-speaking populations here. But the second thing that a lot of people are worried about is whether Vladimir Putin will use this as a pretext to, you know, uh, call for more aggression and use more aggressive weapons and means because once these territories are added to the Russian Federation, uh, he will consider uh, potentially any attack on these lands, in these lands, as an attack on Russia. So what will change after the votes? So after the votes, you know, they're uh, wrapping up on Monday. Um, it will be a few days once the results are announced, but essentially uh, it, is, it appears to be a done deal in sort of the eyes of, of Moscow. There are some of the separatist officials that are backed by the Kremlin that are already celebrating that this is historic. Um, a day um, is approaching when the, they will officially join Russia. Um, they will be added as separate regions. This is what the ballot um, has. Um, the voting ballot says it, whether you agree to become another subject of the Russian Federation. And again, the concern that we've heard, uh, especially based on Vladimir Putin's speech this Wednesday, is that you know once uh, they are united with Russia, he is prepared to um, use all means available to him uh, to protect these lands and protect these people, uh, which is another you know, sign that he is willing to um, you know, be aggressive and it's a sign to Kiev. He hopes that they will back down. 
So in the meantime, we are getting these reports that Russian men are, are trying to flee Russia in order to avoid being called up for military service. Where are they going? Well, there are very few options available to Russians because Russia has been essentially isolated from a lot of the destinations in the world after the war. So uh, a lot of people are going to places like Kazakhstan. So they're crossing uh, the southern border of Russia, um, also to Mongolia. There are you know, online telegram chat rooms where people, you know, just live updating how they cross the border, especially if they're male. Um, they report what kind of questions they were asked, whether they will let out or not. So far, it seems like they can leave. Um, but like once you have the summon in your hand, that means you can't leave your place of residence. So people are trying to escape that. Some people are also trying to cross to Finland, um, although Finnish authorities are considering to close and shut that down. Um, so they're not a transit country anymore. And there is a small you know, border with Norway we can get in sort of from the Arctic town of Mormons. The Kremlin has deemed desertion and surrender illegal. So what happens to these men if they're caught? Well, if you have the summons and you don't show up, uh, you will you can potentially get tracked down and sent to jail because that is a, a criminal offense if you don't um, respond to this call up. Um, and you know there are you know various fines, but most importantly, importantly, these laws that were again passed like just the day before this mobilization happened is that it makes a really hard for people who are already fighting in in Ukraine to uh, get out of the front line. Um, it it uh, prolongs the contracts that have been already signed by Russian soldiers indefinitely, although they were initially told maybe like three or six months. Um, and yeah, it makes it very, very hard for people who are called out officially to back out of this. So, you know, uh, when we heard Vladimir Putin's speech a couple of days ago, one of the things that he did sort of issue was a veiled nuclear threat. How is the West responding? Well, you know, the West is obviously very alarm, alarmed by this. This is not the first time Vladimir Putin kind of uh, said that, you know, look, I have nuclear weapons and I'm prepared to use them if needed, um, or at least alluded to that. Um, we know that from the Washington Post reporting um, yesterday that Washington has been sending um, sort of back channel um, messages to Moscow saying the punishment will be really, really severe if they are going to take, uh, you know, take it this very grave step. We don't know exactly what these messages have said, but, you know, it is expected that U.S. and Western countries are already trying to think and figure out what would be the response and, more importantly, how to prevent that from happening, what kind of leverage they have over Russia to stop them from doing that if they actually decide to do this. All right, Mary, as always, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.